Hey friends, I hope your week is off to a great start. Today I'm gonna to be trying Chris Morocco's recipe for old school tiramisu. So this is a recipe that Chris and Claire debated on the BA Foodcast a couple months ago. So I'm thrilled to try it out today for two reasons. First, I love tiramisu. And second, Chris Morocco has been on a roll with outstanding sweet treat recipes lately. So I do these Bon Appetit recipe tests every single Wednesday. If you like this one, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Without any further ado, let's see how this goes. As always, I'll leave a link to the recipe and ingredient quantities in the description box below. Before I actually get started making the recipe, I wanna get my pan all ready to go. So I'm starting by greasing the inside with a little vegetable oil to help the cling film stick to the pan, and then just lining the pan very thoroughly with cling film, leaving a good amount of overhang. The overhang you're actually gonna fold over the tiramisu while it chills in the refrigerator. So you want a few inches. So the recipe calls for very strong coffee. So my Breville coffee maker allows me to increase the amount of beans that are ground, as well as the amount of time that the water and beans steep together to extract the flavor. So I dialed both of those settings all the way up to the maximum amount. However, if you don't have a Breville coffee maker that has this function, you could definitely use a French press, or if using a standard drip coffee maker, increase the amount of beans by maybe 50% and that'll get you to the right strength. I let my coffee cool for about 20 minutes prior to adding the sugar, salt, and dark rum to it. Once it's cooled down just a bit, whisk the ingredients in, make sure that the sugar and salt are completely dissolved, and then you can pop this in the refrigerator or freezer. You wanna get this chilled down to about room temperature prior to assembly. The filling of the tiramisu is actually composed of two separate recipes that we fold together at the end. So the first recipe here is the mascarpone cheese and heavy cream. You're just gonna whisk this together and then set it aside until you're ready. One note is that you're going to add the second recipe into this bowl. So ideally you would use a larger bowl than I did here. The second component of the tiramisu filling is this kind of custardy mixture. It's a combination of granulated sugar, a little bit of water, and then egg yolks. So you're just gonna get these combined in a heat-proof bowl, and then we'll pop this over a double boiler. You want that double boiler just simmering. Then, using either a whisk or an electric hand mixer, we're just gonna whisk this for five to seven minutes. And what we're looking for is for the color to get much lighter and paler, and look a little bit fluffier and kind of thicken up a little bit. The volume of this mixture should about triple in size. And the way that we're gonna check when this is done is by lifting the beaters out of the mixture and it should make little ribbons back onto itself that slowly sink in. This took me six minutes. The last thing we need to do before assembly is just to whip our chilled cream and mascarpone mixture to medium peaks. So what you're looking for is that when you pull the whisk out of the mixture, that the peak rises and then flops over on itself just a bit. With my hand mixer, this took me about one minute. So you can see why I said to put the whipped cream mixture into a larger bowl. I didn't leave myself a lot of room for folding here. So when it comes to folding, you wanna be as gentle as possible. You don't wanna knock all the air out. So a wider, flatter spatula is a good choice here. You wanna be sure that you're giving a lot of attention to the bottom of the bowl as well as the sides. Don't localize your efforts all in one place. And you wanna continue mixing this until there are no streaks remaining. I'm pouring my coffee into a wide, shallow dish to make dipping the lady fingers a little bit easier. So you wanna do one to two seconds per side. You don't want this to be completely soggy and falling apart, but you do wanna be sure that the coffee flavor is adequately soaking into the lady fingers. After laying down the first eight lady fingers, you can spoon a third of the filling mixture over the top and just spread it out with a spoon to level. And then you're gonna repeat this entire process two more times. So eight more coffee soaked lady fingers, another third of the mixture, and then topping again with the final eight lady fingers. This recipe was very precise in that I completely ran out of coffee on my final lady finger. So if you're concerned about running out, you might want to increase the coffee just a bit. Once you've got this all assembled, fold up the cling film over the top and pop this in the refrigerator. So I left this in for about six hours, but you could leave this in up to three days in advance. Removing the tiramisu from the bread pan is pretty easy thanks to the cling film. 
So we're just gonna flip this over. The bread pan pops off no problem and the cling film peels away nice and neatly. So we're just going to dust this with some cocoa powder right before serving. Chris didn't specify whether to use natural cocoa powder or Dutch process. Based on the picture from the BA website, it looked like natural cocoa to me, so that's what I'm using here. If you want to use Dutch process, it'll just give you a richer chocolate flavor. The tiramisu is appropriately chilled now, and I cut myself a slice. So you can see nice even layers between the lady fingers here. The texture of the filling was a little bit thinner than I expected it to be. I thought I could cut this and slice it more like cake, um, but it really is like a classic tiramisu that you would serve with a spoon. So the loaf format <laughs> made serving a little bit difficult, but I got a piece out, so let's see. Do a nice close up so the lady fingers look like they're pretty much soaked through. They don't look soggy, but it looks like the coffee flavor got all the way in there. Mmm. Oh my gosh, this is so light and airy. It doesn't feel super indulgent. This is perfect for a hot summer day. Mm-hmm. This is so good. So I am really happy with the tiramisu. The flavor and texture are exactly what I was looking for. Very classic and traditional and reminiscent of what I've had at great Italian restaurants in the past. So this is definitely something that I am going to make again. So let me know in the comments below if you think this is something that you're going to try or if you have another favorite dessert that's your go-to during the summertime. So I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.